Hello and welcome to today's episode of Rainer on Leadership, your online home for leadership lessons and advice for the local church. I am your host, Sam Rainer. I have with me the founder and CEO of Church Answers. Sounds His name so is- formal and old. Founder and CEO. Well, that was my goal. Your name's okay. Tom Rainer. We're glad you're here. Yeah. But we're also glad to have Dr. Derwin Gray with us on the show. Welcome, Derwin. Thank you. So glad to have you. Thank you. I'm honored to be on with 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 y'all. I'm 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 fans from afar. Well, thank you, thank you. And we're going to be talking about a very important topic. He's written a book. We'll talk about the. It's all about healing the racial divide. I know that this book is going to sell. I know that all of our listeners are going to want to get a copy because it is such a timely book, and it's something that we all need to be reading. Uh, but before we get into the content, and before I make an introduction. I'd like to talk about our sponsor, Southeastern Baptist Theological Seminary, S-E-B-T-S dot E-D-U. Go check them out. They're committed to helping you get the training you need to pursue ministry from anywhere around the world. And that's why we are waiving the application fee. So when you go and you check them out and you go to S-E-B-T-S dot E-D-U and look at all the programs and uh, degrees that they offer and you you go through the application process, if you type in the code Church Answers all one word, plural, church answers, that application fee will be waived. So no matter what stage of life's journey you find yourself in, they, Southeastern, want to help you take your next step to getting to being a disciple who teaches other disciples. So when you go to Southeastern, you will find a seminary that isn't just about theological education. It is about ministry preparation. Again, you can find more about the institution at sebts.edu. DU. So, Dr. Gray, we'll call you Derwin if that's all right. Um, that works. But, Derwin's awesome. Um, we're glad you're here. I'm assuming most of our listeners know who you are, but just in case, you're the co-founder, lead pastor of Transformation Church, a multi, multi-everything multi church. You're like multi-ethnic, multi-generational, mission-minded, going to all these different places, located in Charlotte, North Carolina. Um, is a popular, popular conference speaker. He's the author of Hero. Unleashing God's Power in a Man's Heart. Um, he uh, He's also the author of Building a Multi-Ethnic Church, The Good Life, God Do You Hear Me, and Limitless Life. So he's done a lot. Uh, most people know him, but just in case you don't, uh, that's who he is. Um, and one of my favorite pastors, he's got a great family. Uh, and he met his wife, Vicki, at Brigham Young University. Glad to see the hat there. So the hat. Um, for those of you who are watching Dermot, on YouTube. What, what position did you play now? So the position I played was safety uh, because playing defense is biblical. Acts 20, verse 35, the Lord Jesus says, it is better to give than receive. So therefore, I exegeted that text to mean it's better to give hits on defense than to receive hits on offense. Now, um, however, well, since you have a lot of confidence in your biblical acumen with that. So thank you. <laughs> yeah, yes. Yes. So, yeah, I was a defensive guy. <laughs> Well, what we really want to talk about today is his new book. Uh, by the way, um, he's got two adult children. Don't want to forget those. I see that in the bio. Your kids are very important, uh, Presley and Jeremiah. Uh, so I just want to give a, a shout out to them as well. Um, but we really want to hear about your new book, How to Heal Our Racial Divide, what the Bible says and what uh, what the first Christians knew about racial reconciliation. And at the this po- it's it's today. It's April fifth. It is being released today. That's when this podcast releases. That's when your book releases. So for those of you who are listening, it's the links in the show notes. But you can also just go get it. Um, so it is available today. It would be a great time to purchase this book. Um, so Derwin, thank you, thank you for joining us here. Hey Derwin, uh, let us see the book. I want to see, I want to see what the cover looks. Yeah, show like. show the YouTube Maybe. channel. There we go. It's it's a hard it's a hard cover as well. You know, um, when you when you write a book, um, it's it's a lifetime work. And with this book, you know, it's 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 real life uh, ministry. It's a doctorate. It's a master's. Um, but it's kind of like it's like the Lord saying, hey, I've done something in your life. I've done it in the church that you lead. I want you to help others to understand and appreciate that my gospel is not just about forgiving sins, but about creating a family with different colored skins 
And this family was a family that God the Father promised Abraham. And one of the things is people read the, the book, they're going to fi find out that our God is a promise keeper, covenant ke ke keeper. He told Abraham, through you, I'm going to bless the world. And ultimately, that blessing was Jesus. And so salvation is not simply an individualistic thing. He saves us as individuals to put us into a family, to make us his bride, to make us the temple that he dwells in. And the beauty of salvation is as we love each other across ethnic lines, social economic lines, political lines, the world takes notice that Jesus really did raise from the dead. And so a lot of this book is, is I love Jesus and I want people to love him too. And I want the reputation of Jesus from his people and how they love um, to be, to be expanded, to be enhanced, to partner with the spirit, to go, this is what Jesus looks like in people today. He's loving, he's kind, he's understanding, he's compassionate, he's truthful. And he really shows us how to actually be human. Oh, that's so good. What, what do you mean, Derwin, by colorblind theology? Let our audience know. Yeah, yeah. You know, so, so I, I didn't, I didn't grow up in the, in the church. I actually came to faith at 26 years of age through a teammate. His name was Steve Grant. His nickname was the naked preacher because every day after practice, he'd take a shower, dry off, wrap a towel around his waist. I was like, what's up with this dude? They said, don't pay no attention to him. That's the <laughs> naked preacher. And so eventually after five years of him chasing around the locker room half naked, I came to faith. Right. And so when I became a Christian, my wife and I, uh, we became Christians about the same time. And we just developed a hunger and passion for Jesus and scripture. And because we didn't go to church, when we started attending churches, we asked ourselves, OK, wait, wait, wait. Why is it that the nightclubs we would party in? look more like Revelation 5, 9, every nation, tribe, and tongue than Jesus' wow. church. Jesus' church, like it wasn't politically correct to say white church. Yeah. It's politically correct to say black church because of the historical issues. But it was like, wait a minute, why do we have to choose? Why, why can't it look like Jews and Gentiles? And eventually God said, well, don't criticize Create and so February 7, 2010 is when Transformation Church was launched. But one of the things that I learned as an African American is my white brothers and sisters with good intentions would say to me, Well, I don't see color. And my response is, Well, you should, because God made our different ethnicities, colors, and cultures. That 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 the image of God is located in every ethnicity and in every culture. And when we mute someone's color, we're muting a part of who they are, but we're also muting a part of God's creative, creative genius. And, and so we don't wanna be color blind, we wanna be color blessed. Recently, um, I was in a coffee shop and an older uh, white br br brother and I were in conversation. He says, I don't see color. And I said, man, why not? Like God made you the way you are. God made me the way I am from my ancestors all the way back to Adam and your ancestors all the way back to Adam. We don't want to be colorblind. We want to be color blessed. And I think what the enemy has done with color blind ideology, it almost acts as a spiritual sleeping aid. Well, because I don't see color, I actually don't see some of the problems or of injustice. I actually ignore some of the problems of injustice. Let me give you an example. So God has blessed Transformation Church immensely. Uh, we were told in the South, you could never plan a multi-ethnic church. It'll never work. Well, God is grown us to multiple, multiple, multiple thousands. Our church is probably 55 to 58 percent white, everything else. And what I've noticed over the years is for white brothers and sisters who have adopted children of color, particularly black kids, they'll come to me and, and say, Pastor, we never knew a lot of what black people were experiencing because the way our black children are treated compared to our white kids we now know what y'all have been talking about. And of course, as a pastor, I'm to shepherd them. So I love them, I hug them, and I say, you could have known only if you would have listened because we've been saying it for years. 
oftentimes we don't listen until a problem knocks on our front door. And I believe the gospel. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, on, I believe I believe the gospel calls us to care about injustice, even when it doesn't affect us. And I've rooted this in theology. Think about, about it. In the eternal counsel of the Godhead, Jesus had no sin. He's infinitely holy, beautiful, and perfect. God in his omniscience knows that we're going to sin. And I'm so glad Jesus didn't say, well, that's not my problem. That doesn't affect me. No, love says your problem is my problem. Love drove Jesus to the cross. Love drives us to the cross. Philippians 2, 3, do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit, but consider others better than yourself. Philippians 2, 4, don't, even, don't just look out for your own interests, look out for the interests of others. And so I believe that this type of gospel understanding will not only transform us personally, but it'll transform us as the church collectively. Mm. Well, we've got Derwin Gray with us, and he is sharing some incredible insight, and I'm, I'm very grateful. And Derwin, just so you know, um, this is something that is personal to me. I have a multi-ethnic family, mm -hmm. um, and I'm working, hopefully, to have to lead. I'm a pastor, hopefully, lead a multi-ethnic church. Um, that's our goal. Forty percent of our community is ethnic minority, so forty percent of our church should should you know for reaching our community and loving our community, it should be reflected in our church. And Man. Um, I, I think most people would agree with that. I hope most would, because um, we just want to reach the neighbors around us. But when it comes to pastors and church leaders, particularly a guy like me, so. Um, I'm white. If, if you're just listening, if you haven't figured that out, I don't know how, how you would know, but um, <laughs> I have a multi-ethnic family. I want to lead a multi-ethnic church. I mean, what, what encouragement would you offer pastors like me who, yeah. like, I, I feel like my heart's in a good place. I, I realize that I may not know everything, but, I, you know, I want to preach against the sin of racism. Yeah. I, I, I want to be part of the solution. I, I want to lead my church well. What, what would you tell someone like me? Yeah, you, you know, the first thing over the years of consulting and coaching and mentoring is a lot of white br brothers that are pastors will, will say, well, well, Derwin, I'm white. And tongue in cheek, I'll go, oh, my goodness, God the Father's looking at Michael the Archangel and going, Pastor Sam is white. <laughs> so so by 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 way of theological reflection. The Apostle Paul was a Hellenistic Jew trained under Galileo, a Pharisee, a one-time Jewish nationalist. Um, but for him to reach Greeks, his ethnicity, he never used as a hindrance. So God in his providence knew who you would be and when you would be. Love is the universal language that transcends ethnic barriers. Case in point, Jesus goes to Samaria, 700 year ethnic feud. Jesus breaks down a misogynistic male female barrier as well. So the first thing that I would say for you, Sam, is to recognize that in God's sovereignty, he's created you the way you are and he's going to give you his love. Now, the key is love is not just emotional. Love is strategic. Love is listening. Love is cross-cultural competency. Love is desiring to be, to understand before being understood. Love says, I'm going to walk in your shoes. That's what love does. And so, for example, some of the men who've impacted me the most, matter of fact, the most overwhelming majority of them have been white men, particularly football coaches. And I'm from the 80s. And so this is when football co coaching was just straight up rough. It wasn't caring about no emotions, none of those things. But these, I knew these men loved me, right? And so when your congregation knows that you love them and a way to express love is like say okay so juneteenth is coming up in june for those of you who don't know in texas as a kid we would celebrate juneteenth because two years after the emancipation proclamation in beaumont texas union troops finally arrived to texas and said by the way uh enslaved pe pe people you're free it happened on juneteenth right so when june comes along express that, 
share that and then tie it into God's ultimate liberation from sin and death and evil, that God calls us to be special forces of reconciliation. Our weapons are faith, hope, and love. What I'm calling people to is a deeper discipleship that empties us of ourselves so that Christ can pour more of himself into us. And so, Sam, what you know, number one, love. Number two, um, your leadership team has to reflect what you want your congregation to be. Authentic sharing of power. Representation matters. Number three, cross-cultural competency. Um, so as a Black man, my whole life, I've had to learn the dominant narrative of our society. And so I learned early on, the better I knew about other people, the better I could navigate the world. So now, as a pastor of a multi-ethnic church, my cross-cultural competency is fairly high because it's had to be. Mm -hmm. And so with white pastors, that's one of the things that I encourage them with is become a student of other people's culture because it's going to teach you how to authentically love better. And, and then lastly, what I would say is caring about things that minority people care about as well. And, and, and so, uh, uh, Pastor Sam, are your, are your children male or female that are of color? So I have two daughters. They're white. Um, I have a son that's white. I have a, another son that's black. And we foster as well. And so we have... Uh, we have a foster daughter. She's no longer in our home, but she she is often with us still. So yeah. two black two black children. Yeah. And how old is your son? Uh, he's five. Okay. So you haven't had so you haven't had to have to have to have the talk with him yet. Oh no, we have. Um, and thankfully, we have some wonderful black men in Good. our church and black Good. women. We have a multi ethnic staff, so Good. he doesn't feel the perhaps what others may feel, but he's, he's asked us the question about why is his skin color darker than, uh, than our skin color? That question has come up. Yeah. Well, and even as he gets to driving age, you're going to have to have another talk with him about make sure your license and insurance papers are where you can get to them quickly. You roll down your window, you put your hands by the steering wheel, you don't move. Yes, sir. No, sir. And those are those are difficult, painful conversations. But if you share that in a message, that's going to connect with minority people because you're invested. You have like skin in the game, and that's in essence what the Apostle Paul did in First Corinthians nine nineteen through twenty three. And then from my perspective, as a black pastor, I'm also pastor of poor whites whose jobs have been outsourced overseas. And so I care for them as well. To be pro-Jesus is to be pro-human. And one of the bigger things too is, and we say this all the time at Transformation Church, we're not the party of the elephant. We're not the party of the donkey. We're the party of the lamb. God's kingdom mm -hmm. is going to push against both of those parties. Does that mean that you shouldn't vote? Of course not. Vote, but understand that secondary to the primary, and we can actually love each other because not everybody on the side of the aisle believes everything on the side of that aisle. And, and so it's important for us to lead with the power and the wisdom of the lamb, not the partisanship of donkeys and elephants. So the book We're is how to, to, you go you, on, I Sam. Was, no, I was just going to say the book is how to heal our racial divide. What the Bible says and the first Christians knew about racial reconciliation. So I know that a lot of what you're hearing probably resonates with you. You need to get this book. Um, there's a lot of wisdom that Derwin is giving. It's contained in the book. Um, so go get the book. We're just giving you just a little glimpse into what he has to share with you. Uh, so How to Heal the Racial Divide is, is a wonderful work. Go pick it up. And the book is released today. Uh, today for the release of this podcast is April 5th, 2022. Uh, I don't want to embarrass you, Durham, but can I say the book one more time? You mind just holding that book up one more time? Yes, sir. So yeah, I, we want our YouTube, YouTube. We want our YouTube viewers to to be able to see the book. There we. It's a beautiful cover. Very hey, well done. Kendall did a phenomenal job. Annie F. Downs, a friend of mine, wrote the foreword, and uh, it's 
like if I never write a book again, this is my gift to the world to say, let's change it. Let's be the change that we want to see. And there's going to be some very challenging things in here for people of all ethnicities. There's going to there's going to be some challenge in here, but but that's what the gospel does. Pick up your cross and follow me. It's time for us to put down our preferences and pick up our crosses. And when we pick up our crosses, God lifts us up, meaning that we begin to reflect him more and more and more. And we'll never read the Bible the same. Mm -hmm. Jesus, so oh my goodness, y'all. Do we understand that when Jesus told the parable of the Good Samaritan, that would have been riot starting. 700 year ethnic feud between Jews and Samaritans. And he tells a story where a Jewish priest and a Jewish Levite pass up a Jewish man, not because of uncleanliness rules, but simply because they didn't want to. But a Samaritan stops and bandages him up puts him on a donkey, pays for his end. But can you imagine, and I think we're on good ground here. Can you imagine when the Samaritan goes back to Samaria and he says, hey, um, I helped this guy on the side of the road that was like dead. And they go, well, what Samaritan was it? And he goes, no, it was actually a Jew. Can you imagine the names he would have got called? A Jew lover, uh, you know, Jewish lives matter. And what's interesting about that text, I'm not going to get into it, to it. I want to save some for the book, but Jesus points out this, that the Samaritan man, it says, and when he saw the man, it didn't say when he saw the Jew who I had a 700 year feud with is when he saw the man, what if we begin to see people? Okay. I'm going to preach a little bit because this gets to my heart. What if, what if, what if we begin to see people the way Jesus sees them? What if we begin to love people because Jesus died for them? What if we begin to put on cross-shaped glasses and every person we come in contact with, we go as worthy of dignity and respect and love because Jesus went to the cross for them. Listen, I don't have to agree with you to love you. I don't have to uh, appreciate everything you do to love you, but I do know this. If I ever want to change you, it has to start with me loving you because God first loved me. I think we as Christians and people in general, we talk about love, but we don't understand that love, agape, the Hebrew hisset, this is never giving up, a life-giving, sin-forgiving, never backing away, always for you kind of love. And here's the beautiful thing is when we allow the spirit of God to teach us to love like, like that, we become more of who God has created us to be. Well said, well said. Derwin, I want to come back to you just to wrap it up in just a moment because I, I, I certainly don't want to, yeah, the book can give a complete overview of all these things you said, but I just want you to be able to have the last word. So hang on for just a moment. Uh, Derwin mentioned Tyndale, the publisher of the book. We love the folks at Tyndale, Derwin. So I just just want to thank thank the Lord for them and uh, for their affiliate organization, Nav Press. Two things I want to feature, and then we're going to go back to Derwin. First of all, the four steps, our featured resource, four steps to revitalizing your church. It's available at 60 percent off. Uh, through May 7th. You can see that in the show notes. You have an opportunity to jump at our foundational resource, Four Steps for Revitalizing Your Church. And then Hollywood Heroes, which is our other sponsor, How Your Favorite Movies Reveal God by Frank Turek and Zach Turek. And it's a, it's a book <laughs> that will change the way you watch movies and transform the way you understand the ultimate hero, Jesus Christ. So the two Tureks and Hollywood Hero have a collection of characters of the most popular movies to show how their fictional stories reveal factual truths about God. It can give your pastors, your youth group leaders, your, your parents an engaging resource for sharing the gospel message and inspiring life lessons with the young adults. So they talk about Captain America, Iron Man, Harry Potter, Star Wars, Lord of the Rings, Batman, and Wonder Woman. So visit navpress.org slash Hollywood Heroes. You can see the and put promo code in there. Rainer, R 
A I N E R. Put it put in there, get 30% off. So those are two resources uh, that we are featuring now. The four steps for revitalizing your church at uh, 60% off, and then the book at 30% off. Derwin, it has been a joy to have you. I want you to have the last word before we begin to sign off on what has been a very special edition of Rainer on Leadership. Yeah, well, thank thank you guys for allowing me to share. Uh, my my last word is is this. Um, evil persists when good people do nothing. Um, I have written this book for people of goodwill who are saying, I know racism and prejudice is a sin. I want to do something about it, but I don't know what to do. And so I've written this mm. book, not only as a theological book, and I try to write it in a beautiful and engaging way, but it's a very practical book. There are things that you can do to practice. So my hope is that there are thousands upon thousands of small groups. At the end of every chapter is a prayer, things to think about, questions to answer, and then gospel practices to do. And so I'm writing this resource as a how-to manual so that we can bring glory to Jesus. And when that ha happens, our families are changed, we are changed, and we push back the darkness with this marvelous light. What a great ending word. Thank you so much. Dr. Derwin Gray, the book, How to Heal Our Racial Divide, What the Bible Says and What the First Christians Knew About Racial Reconciliation, it releases today. We're so grateful for Derwin. Thank you, Sam. Thank you for Amy. Thank you for Hakeem. Thank you for all of those who are, who are producing this and making this available to you. And thank you, our listening and our viewing audience on YouTube, for being here at Rainer on Leadership. Watch us wherever you watch us on YouTube and then listen to us, wherever you, whatever podcast you subscribe to. And join us at churchanswers.com where we're helping churches get healthier together. <laughs>